Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth generation to generation. Miss Yolinda, so we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For our Lord is good. His mercies are everlasting and his truth endureth for generation to generation, Miss Kathy, and that includes us. So we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For our Lord is good, his mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth for generation to generation. Karam man, my sweet brother Benjamin, so we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. We will bless his name. Yes, we will. We will bless his name. Oh, Benjamin will bless him in Pukot. He will bless his name in Kaswihili. Swahili, English, glory, <clears throat> many languages. Well, my dear friends in Christ, my brothers and my sisters, this is March 15th, and we will be reading from Numbers 22, 21, if you would like to get that ready. Numbers 22, 21. <clears throat> But this is a special day, very special day. Our magnificent president has declared this to be a national day of prayer, prayer. And I am so grateful and I am so pleased with him for doing that <clears throat> against this virus, against all the sin of the nation. Benjamin, you can be praying for Kenya and all of her sin that the Lord is not pleased with, and about your plague of locusts. Delaying crops? You can let me know. <clears throat> anyway, I'm not pulling out any stops. I'm not holding back any, anything today. I'm pulling out all the stops. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we declare this day to be a total day of prayer for each and every one of our lives, for Kenya, for America, for the rest of the world. But mostly America is where it's been declared. And so we believers take it seriously. And first of all, we will bind you, devil. We come against every curse. We break every single curse from every witch and every coven across this land. In the name of the powerful, mighty Savior, Jesus Christ, and by his blood, we believe that every curse is broken. Every curse, every disease is broken. This virus is broken. Cancer is broken. Every disease is broken. 
Every sin has the blood of Jesus coming against it. Every abortion, we ask, Lord, that you bring a stop <clears throat> to this for us. Cause us to rise up. Cause us to come against every sin that we see in our lives. <clears throat> every sin and evil person in our government. We come against them. <clears throat> we say, let the gospel of Jesus Christ be preached to them, revealed to them, that they might hear with ears that are open, that they might be drawn unto their Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and those, Lord, that you declare have gone beyond the day of receiving, then, Lord, we're asking that you deal with those enemies. We're asking that you come as David. We've been reading fierce psalms, Father God, <clears throat> We've been reading Psalms from your precious servant, David. Some of the words that he declares are enough to raise the hair on my head. And so we will be bold today, and we declare peace across America. We declare order. <clears throat> we declare righteousness. Righteousness. All in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, and to honor him. To honor him, we declare the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord over America, Lord over Washington, D.C. We break every filthy, filthy sexual sin in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every sin that is an abomination unto you, Lord, <clears throat> we declare that the hold will be broken off of the people. And the people will be set free in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you praise and glory, Lord. We bless you. We come into your courts with thanksgiving. Yes, your mercy is extended. New every morning are your mercies. Great is your faithfulness. And so, Lord, we prostrate our souls, our bodies, our spirits, our minds before you on this day for a washing, <clears throat> for a change, for a gathering of the army of believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that the kingdom of God would be advanced today. And all of God's sons and daughters who believe cried a hearty, Amen! And we mean that, so be it. Amen! Men, amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. <clears throat> so now on this precious, precious day, precious day, oh, hallelujah, we will read from Numbers 22, 21. And we have the beautiful story here, puzzling story at times of Balaam, all right? So Balaam rose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. And if you remember, first of all, God forbade him to go, said you'll not go. And then I kind of believe this is a big test here because <clears throat> apparently his heart was really still reasoning it. And so the next time the Lord came to him, he said, okay, you can go, but don't speak anything except the words I give you. Nothing except the words I give you. Let's see how it works out. He went with the princes of Moab. Then God's anger was aroused because he went. Aroused because he went. He played around with God's first answer <clears throat> and got weakened, didn't he? And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. So Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards 
with a wall on this side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. Then the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was nowhere to turn, no way, either to the right hand or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she just lay down under Balaam. So Balaam's anger was aroused and he struck the donkey with his staff. And then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. And she said to Balaam, the donkey said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, <laughs> Balaam's so angry, he, he's all caught up. He doesn't even say, wait a minute here. This donkey's talking to me. Oh, he answers her. <laughs> Anger will do terrible things to you. You all right? And Balaam said to the donkey, because you have abused me. I wish there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. So the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to do this to you? <laughs> and Balaam still answering, and he said, no. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand and he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you because your way is perverse before me. <clears throat> oh, lots of times we plow on, we want to have our own way, and it's not the way of the Lord, and we end up in trouble just like Balaam is. The donkey saw me and turned aside from me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely I would also have killed you by now and let her live. And Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displeases you, I will turn back. <clears throat> and then the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I speak to you, that you shall speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. Now when Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the city of Moab, which is on the border of the Arnon, the river, the, born, the boundary of the territory. And then Balak said to Balaam, Did I not earnestly send to you, calling for you? Why did you not come to me? Am I not able to honor you? <clears throat> Who does he think he is, right? And Balaam said to Balak, Look, I have come to you. Now, have I any power at all to say anything? The word that God puts in my mouth, that I must speak. So Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kirjath Husoth. And then Balak offered oxen and sheep, and he sent some to Balaam and to the princes who were with him. <clears throat> so it was 
the next day that Balak took Balaam and brought him up to the high places of Baal. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. You understand that? <clears throat> up to the worst satanic place available that from there he might observe the extent of the people. Chapter 23 of Numbers. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build seven altars for me here, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did just as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stand by your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me, I will tell you. So he went to a desolate height, and God met Balaam and said to him, I have prepared the seven altars, and I have offered on each altar a bull and a ram. Then the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. So he returned to him, and there he was, standing by his burnt offering, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his oracle and said, <clears throat> Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram, from the mountains of the east. Come, curse Jacob for me, Jacob, and come, denounce Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. There, a people dwelling alone, not reckoning itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number one-fourth of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, but let my end be like this. And Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies. And look, you have blessed them bountifully. <clears throat> Balak still doesn't have ears to hear, does he? Still doesn't get it. So he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak what the Lord has put in my mouth? And then Balak said to him, Please, uh, <clears throat> come with me to another place from which you may see them. Uh, you shall see only the outer part of them and shall not see them all. Curse them for me from there. Still not going to get the message. So he brought him to the field of Zophaim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. And he said to Balak, Stand here by your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. Then the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go back to Balak, and thus you shall speak. So he came to him, and there he was, standing by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab were with him. And Balak said to him, What has the Lord spoken? <clears throat> and then he took up his oracle and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, 
Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox, for there is no sorcery, no sorcery, like we just took authority over against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, oh, what God has done. Look, a people rises like a lioness and lifts itself up like a lion. It shall not lie down until it devours the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. <clears throat> and then Balak said to Balaam, Neither curse them at all nor bless them at all. So Balaam answered and said to Balak, Did I not tell you, saying, All that the Lord speaks that I must do? And then Balak said to Balaam, Please come. Uh, <clears throat> I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there. How do you think Balaam feels about now? So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor that overlooks the wasteland. And then Balaam said to Balak, build for me here seven altars and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bull and a ram on every altar. <clears throat> there you have it, my dear brothers and sisters. Until tomorrow, Lord willing, Lord willing only, right? We leave you on that little cliffhanger of Peor. All right, we move along to the glorious New Testament, and we are in the Gospel of Luke. We are still in the first chapter. It's quite a long chapter. Luke 1, 57. Luke 1, 57. And we will read once again the birth of these holy babies. And, you know, we need to think of it. It's not just a season. It's not, oh, we, don't, we only read that at Christmas. No, no, it's the word of God. And it's good for every day. So let's, let's read on. Now Elizabeth's full time came for her to be delivered. And she brought forth a son, just like she was told. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. Oh, check out Kathy's graphics. She has just beautiful ones. So that Old Testament Balaam story and, and of the new. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child. And they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, no, he shall be called John. But they said to her, there's no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to the father what he would have him called. Remember, Zacharias was struck mute because he didn't believe Gabriel. And he asked for a writing tablet. And he wrote saying, his name is John. So they all marveled immediately. 
His mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, praising God. And then fear came on all who dwelt around them, and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. <clears throat> now his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. All oh, these are good words for this declaration day of prayer in America to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear <clears throat> in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. <clears throat> oh, isn't that beautiful? So the child John grew and became strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his manifestation to Israel. Oh my, <clears throat> is that not a wonderful reading so wonderful for today. We will move right along now to Psalm 58. Psalm 58, this was another miktam of David, and it was given to the chief musician, and he said it to the tune, Do Not Destroy. <clears throat> Do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Woo! Is that a statement to hit your heart? I pray it hit your heart, it hit mine. Do you indeed speak righteousness, you silent ones? Do you judge uprightly, you sons of men? No. In heart, you work wickedness. You weigh out the violence of your hands in the earth. <clears throat> the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf cobra that stops its ears, which will not heed the voice of charmers, charming ever so skillfully. Break their teeth in their mouth, O oh God, <clears throat> Don't you imagine there was a big drum roll? <clears throat> Break their teeth in their mouth, O oh God. Break out the fangs of the young lions, O oh Lord. 
Let them flow away as waters, which run continually when he bends his bow. Let his arrows be as if cut in pieces. Let them be like a snail, which melts away as it goes, like a stillborn child of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the burning thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, as in his living and burning wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Can you imagine that? He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked so that men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely he is God who judges in the earth. Wow. Powerful. That music had to have been powerful. All right. We will wrap up today, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. He who is devoid of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holds his peace. A talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. Oh, <clears throat> we have wisdom to know who we can trust, don't we? Who it is we can share our secrets, our secret prayers with. And who we recognize as a talebearer that can't, can't hold it, can't keep a secret, going to whisper it to somebody else. Oh, precious Father God, Abba, how we rejoice in you today, how we come to you, precious Father, on this day of fasting and prayer, this day declared to be a day of prayer for America. Oh, Father, we, we pray that our prayers are pleasing to you, that our repentive hearts and lives are sincere and received by you. Oh, it's our desire to draw close to you today, Jesus, very close close to you, Holy Spirit, that you might reveal to us how we should handle every minute of this day, how we should put away our desires, our words, our ways, and stay in the Spirit. Stay in you. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us that we might be able to do that. That you would be pleased with us, that you wouldn't look down and, and say, well, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. They went off and did their own thing. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us. Help us today. We give you praise. We give you glory for your word today. <clears throat> a rich, anointed portion of the old, the new, the Assam, the Proverbs. Wonderful. You have fed us with powerful, powerful words, Lord. Let us meditate and, and remember them all day long. Father God, we hold up Israel to you. Israel. Israel who is suffering also. Who's had all all of the tourists leave, which wipes out a lot of their income. So, Father, we'd ask that 
Israel be rid of this virus in the name of Jesus Christ. Israel be rid of the contentions within the Knesset that they might come into unity that the Knesset members that fight against the Jews, that suddenly they repent and are appreciative that they live in Israel and that the Jews treat them nicely. Please, Lord, soften these hard hearts that Bibi Netanyahu can put together a government. We pray for peace today, Lord, peace, to Jerusalem, peace from all rockets. Let the hands of the enemies not be able to do it. Let every attempt fail. Let their hands hang loose at their sides with no strength, no strength. Let them be very weak and let them fear for the weakness. Father God, we hold up America to you once again. And we say, Lord, help us to pray the prayers, to sing the praises, to line ourselves up, to be the mighty, powerful kingdom of God, leading, not lagging behind, not the last ones to speak up, didn't we read, oh, do you bring righteousness, you silent ones? It's time for silence amongst the righteous Christians to stop. And it's time to be bold and be brave and speak up and stick with it. And pray that God might use us, that his will, his righteousness might come and use this country to finish up with missionaries, with Bibles sent everywhere, everywhere, till the word of God has been brought to all people, all people, every last person. Help us to get on fire for your gospel, Lord. And all the people cried a hearty amen, went about your day in the Lord, accomplishing his will for your life. Amen? Amen. Love you all so much. Bye-bye.